The United States has had 44 presidents and also one emperor, and his name was Joshua Abraham Norton, a Jewish Englishman from Cape Town, who in September 17, 1859, walked into the offices of the San Francisco Bulletin and declared himself to be the emperor of the United States and protector of Mexico. <laughs> Many of you have already heard of him. He's been appeared in several books by authors like Christopher Moore and Robert Louis Stevenson, and an author that he knew personally, Mark Twain. Twain was a newspaper columnist during uh, Norton's reign in San Francisco, and he based the character of the king in Huckleberry Finn on Joshua Norton. But unlike his majesty, unlike the king, Norton wasn't a shifty con man who got tarred and feathered and run out of town on a rail. Norton was once a successful businessman who bought up a lot of land holdings real estate during the gold rush. He was very successful until in 1857, he decided to bet his entire fortune on Peruvian rice. Needless to say, this, this contributed to his complete and utter ruin. The investment proved so disastrous that Norton's bank foreclosed all his properties and bled him dry. And incidentally, his personal banker at the time was General William Tecumseh Sherman, who nine years later would do to the South what he did to Norton's bank account. <laughs> Norton vanished for a couple of years until he announced himself as emperor. He began wandering the seats of San Francisco, dressed up in a blue army outfit with a beaver hat, that had peacock feathers and rooster feathers jutting out of it, with a sword and a walking stick. At the time, San Francisco was such a sleepy city where nothing happened that he was the biggest thing in town. So newspapers would give him constant coverage. He was a godsend to the media at the time. And they would also publish each and every one of his imperial proclamations and decrees, of which he had many. And one of the favorite news stories was, was um, the claim that he had two personal dogs who'd fallen around town named Bummer and Lazarus who were two popular stray dogs at the time. The truth is, they weren't actually Norton's dogs. He hated dogs, and he considered uh, dogs to be an unfit entourage for an emperor. He became a freak show tourist attraction and a local legend. They made Emperor Norton cigars, Emperor Norton dolls. Businesses would put a plaque saying that he would eat there and he would attend there. Uh, feeders would put seats for production so he could attend them. Now, he also had competition. Other people claimed to be royalty. There was another San Franciscan named George Washington Combs who claimed to be a reincarnation of George Washington. There was a man who claimed that he was the king of New York. A California shop owner claimed that he was the king of Austria. Unfortunately, most of them end up in insane asylums, unlike Norton, who did, however, get arrested by the cops for vagrancy one day. The public outcry was so immense, they immediately released him and offered him a public apology. And for the rest of his life, San Franciscan cops would salute him whenever he walked by. He issued numerous proclamations. He tried to disband the Democratic and Republican Party. He ordered the army to disband the Senate by force. He also banned the use of the word Frisco, saying there was a high misdemeanor. But he also did order that a bridge be built between San Francisco and Oakland. And about 67 years after his death, that order was carried through. <laughs> now, his eccentricity didn't come out of the blue. As a child, Norton believed that he was the Dauphin, the long-lost prince of France, the last of the royal bourbon line. And interestingly, we have an evil virgin Norton in our history, Baron uh, James Addison Rivas, the Baron of Arizona, a man who claimed that he owned Arizona due to some forged land documents. But unlike the emperor, he didn't actually believe he was a baron. But the two men actually benefited by the benefit of their communities by lying about their backgrounds. Because of the baron's faulty land claims, we became, helped, helped us become a state, and Norton's madness basically put San Francisco on the map as a city of tolerance and weirdness. Now, he's always been a hero of mine because he embodies what uh, Aleister Crowley says is what, what we consider to be magic, which is changing your environment according to your will. And there's probably no ma more magical act in a capitalist society than to print and create your own money and have it be accepted, <laughs> which incidentally, to this day, Norton Bucks are accepted in San Francisco and are a collector's item. They're worth quite a bit of money. Now, what I've always found interesting about Norton is that he also embodies um, this principle that our anarchist writer Hakim Bey said defines what anarchy is, which is it's not about abolishing kings and queens. It's about getting to the point where every man and woman is an absolute monarch in control of their emotions and desires and destinies. And even though he was a poor man who spent the last 10 years of his life living in a boarding house, when he died, over 30,000 people filled the streets of San Francisco to attend his funeral. And though there are many cartoons published in his wake commemorating his death and the death of his beloved dogs, supposedly, the greatest tribute to the man's memory was in the 1870 U.S. Census when the government listed Norton's official job title as emperor. Thank you.